whose love is mighty and so much stronger, the King of glory, the King above all kings, who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder, who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder, the King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing craze. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. the 
Good morning, everyone. It's great to welcome you this morning. As you'll notice, we have far fewer people uh, joining us actually physically in the building today, but it's great that we can get together and we can worship God and concentrate on Jesus. Even though we are physically apart, we can be together with him. And we're going to start by worshipping the wonderful King of Kings. We're going to sing, Holy is the Lord God Almighty. Uh, there's a slight problem in that we never want to sing something that we don't believe or do. Um, but the first line is we stand up and lift up our hands. So we may lift our hands. You could certainly stand up wherever you are. Let's worship Jesus, shall we? kingdom of God is about righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. We've got to live right. 
We can know the Prince of Peace in any and every situation. And we can know his joy, which is our strength. It's counterintuitive at this time, just because there are so many challenges around for everybody. But the joy of the Lord is your strength. We can delight ourselves in him. We know he's in control. We know he's the Lord of all. We know he's our hope and he's our strength and he's our peace. And we worship him. Wherever we are, we worship him. And we sing the words, we give you all the glory. And there's something that practically that we do that actually expresses that we place him first in our lives. Um, this week, somebody uh, came to me. There was a family in the church, and they're teaching their daughter how to earn, how to save, and how to spend. And one of the things that they do is they give pocket money for jobs. And this wonderful young life came up to me and she she gave me this envelope maybe you can hear there's some money in it 
And it just says, I shan't say the young lady's name, but it says her name and then it says tithe. You know, I don't think it's even spelt right and I don't think it matters one bit because what she's doing from an early age is just saying, I'm going to set aside something that's for the Lord. I was so deeply moved and uh, I wanted to share that just with you before it goes into the church office. You can give your money by um, standing order or direct debit. The danger with those things, and they're great, and we appreciate all those that do, is you can become a little bit detached from your giving. But we give joyfully, we give generously, we give in faith. And when it just becomes an automatic bank transaction, we can get a bit separated. And I just encourage everybody to be able to pause as the details come up on the screen to be able to send your tithe, which supports people, and your offering, which supports things like the chairs and the music stands and the, all of the cameras and the technology that we need to be able to reach and communicate with you. That your offering and your tithe are important. Uh, this is a season of giving. But we just need a season of discipline in our giving. And just like this young life did, might she be blessed and might you be blessed as you honor the Lord with your finance. Thank you for your giving. Thank you for all that you've done during the course of the year. We appreciate it. And we know this God sees it. And he's a rewarder of those who seek him. Amen.
we just love worshipping with our children. They're, they're not kids' songs, they're praise songs. And he is indeed our lighthouse. You know, that, that uh, one song has had more views than any other song on our social media, on YouTube channel. And if you want to brighten your day, I'd just say this. Go on our YouTube channel, The Community Church Online. Flick through and find every song where this year we have been able to do some actions. You will be encouraged. And I guarantee you, whatever you're feeling, you'll have a smile on your face. Another person who has brought a smile to our faces this year has been Graham Burke. And he's going to share a word because the word he brings has, has humor, it has life, and it has faith for all who listen. So we thank you, Graham. We're looking forward to hearing God's word through God's man. Hi, everyone. Graham here. Not long to go now. Just 28 days until I can start ripping off the paper and opening up the envelopes. Oh, hang on a minute. I can hear you out there saying, what do you mean 28 days? Let me finish first. 28 days until my birthday. And then all the presents you send me and all the cards you send me, I'll be able to open them. Yeah, I know there's something else around Christmas. So I'm ready for that. So you're ready for that. But you need to let me finish sometimes. Anyway, it's not what we're here to talk about my birthday, but let's move on. Today, I want to talk to you about presents, presents and presents. Now, if you weren't listening carefully, you might have thought I said presents, presents, presents three times. Well, I didn't. What I said was, I said present, presents, and presents. All slightly different, all slightly the same, but when I say it, it all sounds the same, I know. Present, present, presents. So if I just want lots of presents, did I mention it's my birthday soon? No, I don't think I did. Anyway, let's start. Let us start at the beginning. Now, present. Jesus presented himself as a sacrifice for our sin. One time sacrifice. Now, Hebrews 7.27 says, Unlike the other priests, he does not need to offer sacrifices day after day. First for his own sins and then for the sins of the people. He sacrificed for their sins once and for all when he offered himself. Jesus offered himself as a sacrifice for our sin. Now, you think that's great, but we too are called to be like Jesus. We are called to present ourselves as a living sacrifice, please. A living sacrifice. I'm not called anyone to end their lives here. A living sacrifice. Romans 12 verse 1. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. Where do we present these things? Well, like Jesus came to earth, we can go to the heavenlies. We can go to the throne of God. Present yourself to the King of Kings, because we have been given access to boldly go there. Hebrews 4.16 <coughs> Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and grace. Mercy and grace. Now, when we go to the uh, throne room, the soldiers, they have, uh, they have battle uniforms and they have dress uniforms, parade uniforms. And when we go to the King of Kings, when we go to the Heavenlies, we go wearing our parade uniform. Jesus has given us a robe of righteousness, which we can wear and we can confidently come in and say, Lord, I'm yours. I have your suit on. And we can present arms. Present arms is a thing where they hold out their rifles 
and it's a sign of respect, a sign of service. And we come and we can do the same. We can say, Lord, take these hands, take these hands and use these. I present to you my life. That is what we're called to do. We are called to go to the heavens, ladies, and present arms, present our lives as a living sacrifice to do service for the kingdom. The next step we want to look at is presence. Jesus said, I am in the Father and you are in me. Now, this one gets a bit complicated for simple folk like me. John 14, 20, on that day, you will realize that I am in my Father and you are in me and I am in you. So you are in me, I am in you, him in me, yeah, it's a bit complicated. If you look at the pattern below of how things are intertwined, you've got the classic Father, Son, Holy Spirit sign there. It's hard to tell as they all go up and round. They all encompass each other and they're all joined together. And it's a bit like the weaving on, on the other side. Where you look at that, each one weaves in and out, weaves in and out, and they become one. They are one. They are one. All those strands become one. God is one but the Trinity. I'm not going to try and explain that to you. I'll leave that to the clever people. But Jesus said, I am in the Father and you, you are in me. And that's that's us. We are now involved in this interweaving. I just want to point out that God goes before you and behind you and beside you. Isaiah 52, 12 says, For the Lord will go before you, the Lord God of Israel will be your rear guard. Our God is with us all the time. God's Spirit is within us. And it's always there. We are always, 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 always with God. God does not let you go. He doesn't leave you alone. We carry the presence of God. With us, we carry the presence of God. Romans 8, 11. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give you life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit, his spirit who lives within you. His spirit lives within you. Now we carry the presence of God. Wherever we go, we carry the presence of God. The essence of God comes from our lives. God's spirit within us, God before us, God behind us. Wherever we go, we should be given off the aroma of God. The presence of God should be felt. The very essence of God there. Because we are there. God is in you. God is in me. So, moving on. Presence to presence. We all love presence, don't we? Now, God has given us gifts. Many, many gifts. There are different gifts, different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit distributes them all. Whether it's prophecy, administration, words of knowledge, words of wisdom. There's so many different gifts out there. Giving, whatever it is, we have been called to minister these gifts. We are here to share. Minister the gifts that we are given, ensuring that you can share them correctly. My main point here is ensure you are bearing fruit, especially the fruit of love. When you share your gifts, ensure they're given in love. Over this time, we're going to see many people, or well, hopefully see some people, or chat with many people who we probably don't quite agree with. 
even within our families, we'll have disagreements of what should be done, how things should be done, what's the correct way of doing things, are we really good enough at following the rules at these times, but whatever you think your gift is, if you have a word of knowledge for someone, don't give it harshly, give it with love, make sure your motives are pure and of the spirit. Proverbs 15 one says, a gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. And 1 Corinthians 13.2 says, If I speak in the tongues of men of angels, but do not have love, if I prophesy, do not have love, then I am just a clanging gong. We need to make sure that when we're given out the presence that God has given us, when we're using the gifts that God has given us, that we minister in love. Now, the best present of all is Jesus. The best present of all is Jesus. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son. So whoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have eternal life. It's a well-known phrase, but for God, for God the Father so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten Son. He gave. He gave him as a gift, as an offering, as a sacrifice for us so we may not perish, but have eternal life and commune with him. Well, that concludes what I've got to say. Thanks for your time and listening. As you can hear, there's a little tune here that some of you remember. Those who've been around for a while, please don't know them. I remember my kids doing this as just a presentation. But in sum, present your life as an offering. Let your life be given over to God's kingdom. Presence, you carry the essence and the aroma of God. Wherever you go, take the presence and the aroma of God with you. Let it be shared with you. Finding presence when you're sharing gift. Make sure you serve a large side of life. Be blessed. Be blessed. That's what you want. People, it's just a finish to this. Merry Christmas. I'm talking to you. The missile. I'm not being so good listening. Grandma gives me a kiss, so I give her a gift I made myself, and I give it with a wish. May the best present of all be Jesus. May the best present of all be God's Son. May the best present of all. And I'll all be from here. Well, I wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. But most of all, I wish for you that Jesus would be near. A baby in a manger 2,000 years ago was the greatest gift that we will ever Best present of all song brings back a lot of memories for some of you oldies in the church. We can remember singing it. We are the gift of Christ to the people around us. So let's be his presence, his light, his love, wherever we are. Thanks, Graham. We so appreciate you and all that you do. Now, 
Uh, if you're around and you're live with us on Sunday, we have got coffee and catch up. It's going to be our last one for the year and we'll be starting those back up in the new year. But join us. There'll be some details at the end of our gathering if you'd like to pop in, meet some friends and share a bit of festive fun. And you can join us again later. It's our premiere of our carol celebration at half past six this evening um, online. And so don't miss out. Make sure that you're there. And then the next thing that we've got is our Together on Christmas Eve, which is on Christmas Eve, starting at half past 11. A mix of word and song as we bring in Christmas Day. First time we've ever done that. It's going to be fantastic. I'm going to watch it in the morning, not at midnight. And uh, on Christmas Day itself, we'll be premiering, 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 we're going to be hosting our Christmas Day meeting. It's going to be 10.30. We'd love you to post pictures of yourself with your Christmas jumper, Christmas socks, Christmas hats. Join us. There's lots of fun, but there's also praise as we worship Jesus together. And of course, as a church family, uh, we are praying especially for those who've experience loss at this time. Sarah Greenwood buried her mum last week, and she's in glory now with Jesus, as is Gwen. And we're praying especially tomorrow for David and the family um, as that cremation takes place. So, Father, just let your peace reign. Thank you that Gwen is with you, seeing you face to face. But for David and John and Tim and the family, we pray your peace and grace upon them in these days. Amen. Amen. Whatever you do, enjoy the life of God and share the life of God with those around you.